The H1 Mini ITX case from NZXT entered the market and was quite frankly unlike anything we'd ever seen before in terms of both its style and execution. Though shortly after its launch, it kind of found itself with some, uh, let's say, um, issues. Some being so severe, in fact, that it actually led to a global recall of the case. Well, after all that drama, NZXT have come out with this and it's called the H1. Basically, it's a refresh and NZXT are hoping to address those issues in a big, or I suppose you could say small way. But with the previous issues aside, does the new version hold up against the original or are we looking at nothing more than a desperate attempt to bring back some lost brand recognition? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's do this. Hey kid, how you doing? What the hell is that noise? What noise? Is that your computer? Oh, that noise. I've kind of got used to it now. That's my stock cooler. Sounds like you need the MSI Core Liquid S360 with its 2.4 inch IPS display, latest Acer Tech 7th generation pump, LGA 1700 support, and MEG Silent Gale P12 fans. You can't hear it coming. Sorry, what? I can't hear you over this stock cooler. Click the link in the description below and get one today. Sounds like you need it. Get it? Now, without dwelling too much on it, we need to address the elephant in the room in order to be fair. And we can't do that without talking a little bit about the original. Well, it all started in late 2020 when online news outlets and YouTube channels started exposing the potential hazards of the H1. And these weren't small hazards. I mean, there was a risk of your PC potentially catching fire. Yeah, it was that bad. How could this happen, you might ask? Well, it turned out to be the fault of the simple and humble PCIe riser cable, where the screw that went through the PCB to secure it to the case could actually make contact with the ground channel inside the PCB, which could essentially cause it to ground itself to the case and catch fire. Yeah, it could have happened to any of us. Admittedly, the chances of this happening to a random user were pretty slim, but it doesn't mean it wasn't a problem. So NZXT's original solution was to send out a kit containing nylon screws to replace the original ones, but only on a user's request. After this, they then started to work on an improved riser design to combat any issues, which they would also later ship out to customers. And then eventually, NZXT requested a global recall of the case. And here we are today. Now, a funny side note is that we actually use the original H1 in our offices, and we've done so for months without any issue. When the nylon screw kit was sent out, we did eventually change that many months later, and we're still using that with the fix to this day. And well, so far, as far as I can see, I've not been burnt alive. So this was the important one, but there were other things that consumers picked up on that I guess aren't technically issues, but could be considered more like constructive criticism, including the airflow or lack of it, the 650 watt power supply not being beefy enough for the most hardcore gamers, and the fact that the most extreme graphics cards on the market just didn't fit due to its two slot limit. So with a history lesson out of the way, we can finally start having a look at the new and hopefully improved H1. I mean, why they didn't call it the H2, I don't know. Probably because from a first glance, it looks, well, pretty much identical until you start looking at it a little bit closer. So the new version features an extra USB 3.2 port on the top of the case because original customers gave feedback about how fiddly it was to get to their USB ports underneath and one single port on top just didn't cut it. Along with this, the ports now sit kind of more flush with the top of the case and just feel a little bit more refined in the manufacturing process. Another small difference is the ports and the power button have all been moved over to the other side of the case likely to give more clearance for your graphics cards, which we will talk about in a little bit. Another change on the outside is the size of the ventilation holes on each side, which have been increased to allow for more airflow through the case. The new version is also physically larger than its predecessor, but not by much, having gained an extra 17 millimeters in height and another nine millimeters in width and depth. The only other noticeable design change comes down to the side panels, which are now kind of more flush, whereas the original had a recess. Now, while this could just be an aesthetic change, it's again more than likely done to increase the overall volume of the case. Now, one big change that the refresh brings is an increased wattage power supply. Out with the old SFXL 650 watt gold rated PSU and in with the new upgraded SFX 750 watt gold unit. So a nice little increase in power, but 
actually smaller in size. Now, one thing with the PSU, which is kind of a non-issue, but people still may complain about, is how NZXT have ditched the physical power button. I mean, it was kind of redundant anyway, as you'd have to remove the side panel to switch it off anyway. Basically, what I'm trying to say is it was more hassle than it was worth. Another addition is the newly included 92mm fan for exhausting hot air out. That was one of the big gripes from existing users. I mean, I don't know if it's just me, but I'd never expect miracles with any small form factor case. But extra cooling is always going to be a bonus. Sticking with cooling, the refresh now comes with a fan controller that is fully compatible with NZXT's cam software, so you can pretty much tweak it to your heart's content. So now onto the one area that literally caused the most issues, the dreaded riser cable. Well, you'd be pleased to know that not only is it improved as it's now actually safe, but the riser cable is also a completely new design and is PCI Express 4.0 compatible. And even looks and kind of feels just better in quality compared to the older PCIe Gen 3 cable. And now for one of the biggest gripes from customers, and me included, which came down to the limitations of GPUs and what size you could actually fit in the case. While it could accommodate some of the latest RTX GPUs from Nvidia, you had to be a little bit picky with what model, which frankly is something no one has been able to do since 2020. Now this all came down to one thing, dual slot or go home. And kind of with more powerful cards commonly having two and a half slot thicknesses, this was a big sticking point. The refresh again tackles that head on and now increases the thickness by eight millimeters and can take 324 mil long cards up from 305 in the original. So it all sounds pretty good and NZXT have kept some of the original features like the built-in 140 mil AIO and just kind of improved on their shortcomings. And while there are, I guess, only a few areas that we can test physically, that's something we wanted to do because adding a 92 millimeter PWM fan and increasing the ventilation on the outer panels all sounds kind of well and good, but does it actually make a difference? So in the fairest way possible, we use the exact same hardware in both the old H1 and the refresh, even down to borrowing the LGA 1700 brackets from the refresh model so we could use the hottest CPU we could find, the Intel Core i9-12900K. Because we were restricted by the size of the GPU on the older H1, we couldn't exactly go all out with a 3080 or above, so instead went for the Gigabyte RTX 3070 Gaming OC. It was basically the most powerful card we could find that would actually fit in the older case. Now, one small sticking point came down to the ASUS ROG Z690 ITX board that we used with its kind of triple decker M.2 solution because it kind of got in the way a little bit with the AIO's tubing. Though I'm actually gonna put this more down to the fault of ASUS and not NZXT. Now, when looking at how we tested at idle, temperatures on the CPU actually favored the old case, which was very interesting. But what was more interesting was the huge drop in temperatures for the GPU on the refresh, showing the small addition of a 92 millimeter fan and larger ventilation holes show some real promise. Getting the CPU nice and warm, we launched Prime 95. And while we saw the same boiling point temperature of 100 degrees, the newer case took a little longer to get there. And we'd never really consider Prime 95 as real world usage anyway. Fermark saw the GPU come in slightly cooler by around eight degrees, again, showing us that the small tweaks with the airflow really are starting to show what kind of difference they make for GPU airflow. In 3D Mark Times by Extreme, we saw the CPU actually coming in slightly worse on the new case, though this could come down to the way that the fan controller and profile as standard is set up. Again, the GPU came out slightly better on the new case due to more airflow and more space around it. For pure gaming performance in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we saw similar results again with the CPU temperatures being worse by quite a margin, whereas the GPU were again slightly lower. When it comes to noise, we always expected the refresh to be a little noisier as it has more physical fans inside. While we saw that in some tests, others saw a slightly different result. And in some, we actually saw close results that you could argue as margin of error. So where does this leave us? I mean, the H1 refresh set out to tackle multiple issues but we would have been stupid if we didn't put some focus on temperatures. But in our normal tests and not the likes of Prime 95 on the hottest CPU on the market, quite literally both cases performed well, but you just get a bit more with the refresh as you'd expect. Otherwise, I mean, what's the point? Now, when the original H1 launched, initial thoughts for consumers were that it was bloody expensive at $349. And from a first glance, they actually seemed right. It was only when you kind of started to break things down and realize what you got for your money that it all started to kind of make sense. The refresh comes in a little bit more at $399, but 
Like the original, this just isn't just a case. Remember, this comes with a gold rated 750 watt SFX PSU, a 140mm AIO, and a high quality PCIe Gen 4 riser cable. I mean, those things alone will set you back at least $200. So once you take that off, you're left with a well thought out and easy to build small form factor case for around 150 bucks or so, which seems pretty good to me. And I said exactly the same about the original H1. So where does this leave us? I mean, the original did come in with a slightly lower launch price, but I'm not even mad because the extras you get are well worth the extra cash. Not only now can I fit a larger graphics card inside, I can now power it too. My components are left nice and cool, mainly when we talk about the GPU and probably the biggest point more than anything, but due to a complete redesign, the riser cable isn't gonna cause me any issues. And in theory, it's gonna give me better performance overall. I don't wanna dwell kind of too much on the past, but safe to say, I think NZXT have learned from their mistakes. The new H1 refresh tackles all of these issues that they had and even makes them better, all while keeping it relatively toolless. If however, you do need a toolkit? I couldn't think of anything better than the eTechnics PC maintenance toolkit with everything you need to build, maintain, and repair your PC. Grab yours over on store.etechnics.com. And with that being said, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And if you fancy seeing something a bit bigger, be sure to check out our MSI Z690 Godlight video. You'll need a much bigger case for it, but damn, is it just as special. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.